Hi guys, I have another Copic coloring and card tutorial for you today. I am coloring Chatting Charlie by Little Blue Button Stamps, which is a new release today. So I really uh, hope that you go over to the Little Blue Button Stamp shop and look at all the beautiful new releases. For the coloring today, I'm actually first mapping out my shadows with my absolute lightest color. This, um, I do this sometimes, but it helps when you're a little bit unsure on where to put your shadows or how much shadows you really want to put down. Then I usually just map it out with the lightest color because if I actually put shadows where I want highlights to be, it's not a problem because the highlights will be in, in the lightest color. So that is how I've done it. Then I've got, gone over that with a purple color. Today I used BV00. Uh, and this is to give it that little purple feeling that shadows have. Uh, if you look at shadows, they're usually at the bluer or more purple tone. And then I'm going over that uh, from my darkest skin color to my lightest skin color, uh, increasing the amount of color I'm adding every time. Uh, one thing to think about is I usually don't go over the full color. With, with the E21 I go over where I have the E11, not the B00. With the E00 I'm going over where I have the E21, but not so much where I have the E11. Because if I would go over the E11 I would saturate or I would make those shadows much much lighter. I would actually blend out those colors. So I'm trying not to go too much over my darker color with my lighter color. If I have gone too much over the darker color with my lighter color, I usually go over again with my darker color to intensify those shadows. I really like to have crisp shadows because the character gets much more shape when you do that. When it comes to her hair, I'm doing this little new technique that I'm playing with where I'm giving her kind of a zigzaggy um, highlights in her hair and this time I went with my next to darkest color or no next to lightest color which was um, YR14 to kind of map it out then I'm going in with my YR18 and I'm actually almost completely covering the E14 with my YR18 uh, because I wanted her to have pretty dark reddish hair. So I'm filling out with that. Then I'm going on over with the YR16. And what I'm trying to do is lengthening those strokes, but also widening them at the base. So basically thinking small triangles. And every time you lengthening your tri triangle, you try to widen it at the base also. And that is how I go about doing this kind of hair. Wire 14 and just adding small, small details. And then I'm going over with my lightest color, which is wire 21. Just to not have any white at the uh, brightest parts. Then I'm gonna color the kitty. And I'm coloring the kitty with the wire 21, E99, and an RV14. YR24, sorry. YR24. Um, I'm trying to give the kitty fur. So I'm kind of flicking my pen as I go to try to make that kitty hair look a little bit more like fur. Um, I could have actually kept the kitty face white, but I ended up making it kind of a yellowish brown. Then I'm going over um, with YR24 and then E19. So when I'm doing the fur pieces at the end, I'm trying carefully to actually flick the darkest color the la latest, because w when I go over with the lighter color, um, I kind of blend those flicks out and it doesn't look as much as hair. So that's one tip. Then I'm using the same kind of tones for her top and her eyes. This is something I quite often do. 
I don't like to have too many different colors in my images. I like to have what I call a reduced color palette. And I try to use two to three colors from a pattern paper, for example, to make my images because often when I use more colors, um, they have a tendency to have a tendency to look a little more busy, at least for me when I color. So I try to have a reduced color scheme when I work. And finally, I'm using my little white gel pen to make the dots in their eyes. Now when I'm cutting her out, I'm actually cutting her out with a small little border. And this is because of the tendrils in her hair. And I, they're very, very, very hard to cut out if you cut them close, really close. So I decided that I just cut them out with a little border and then the, the whole, both of the characters and everything. And also this little white border uh, helps it stand out against the pattern paper so then I don't have to mat her or anything she already have like a natural mat then I'm starting with a card uh, this is some do craft card stock and it's gonna be a landscape mode um, standard A2 card so I'm cutting the pattern paper down it's one eighth of an inch smaller than my cardstock and here I'm missing some f footage I'm sorry about that but what I'm doing is I have um, kind of found the angle of the image and then I cut uh, the paper so that she sits straight uh, for the pattern paper uh, so I was supposed to show you that and, and then the footage disappeared. Um, here I'm using some die cuts. I'm using the Talk Bubbles 2 uh, die cut, uh, die set and stamp, coordinating stamp sets. I'm gonna use the high there stamp set because I thought it worked perfectly. I can, kind of like these kind of cards where it's not a birthday card. Or it's just a I'm thinking of you card sort of. I really like having those, making those kind of cards. But I'm using Versafine Onyx Black as usual for my sentiment. And then I'm going to layer those two talk bubbles. I have cut out an extra talk bubble in the same um, cardstock as I have my mat. And this is to make the um, sentiment stand out a little bit more from the background. Uh, and I don't have a die that is just a smidgen bigger, so instead I'm offsetting them and it works quite good. I have put some tape runner just underneath uh, that computer on that image and then I'm putting it on that little angled pattern piece because then I have put some foam tape underneath both of them and getting both of them up from the paper and that kind of get that feeling that it is a table even a little bit more. I'm also using foam tape underneath that little sentiment and then I ended up putting it over the cat so I kind of liked it anyway. I use some Basil Marshmallow cardstock for my card base which is a standard A2. Um, I just cut the Basil Marshmallow in two and then scored it in the middle. And that was the card for today. I hope you liked it. If you do, please a thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just comment down below. Uh, and until next time, have a nice day. Bye.